coming back and watching another one of my videos. My name is Candy. If this is your first time watching, welcome. Um, if you are a regular viewer and subscriber, thank you so much for coming back and watching another one of my amazing interviews. This week, we are so lucky and so fortunate to have the beautiful Jessica here with us. Um, Jessica happens to live in my subdivision <laughs> and uh, we met by chance. Uh, I'm going to get into that, but I want to go ahead and have Jessica interview, I mean, interview, introduce herself and um, then we will get into how we met and jump into the questions. So Jessica, if you can kindly introduce yourself to my guest and we will start with the questions. Sure. I'm Jessica. Um, I'm married to um, my husband of 24 <laughs> years, a firefighter, paramedic, RN, nurse practitioner. Yeah. <laughs> he um, is retired, but we have four kids. Um, yeah. And I work in the medical field. So we're all busy. With we're all busy. Family. Yeah, we're all busy. Life is happening for sure. <laughs> well, thank you so much. So um, any of you guys that have been following me for quite some time know that when we started our second um, adoption journey, we were fundraising like crazy. And um, out of the blue, I got a message from a lady um, when we were doing the Valentine's Day um, mini cupcake fundraisers. And I promise you, I felt like every day she was like, I need another one. I need another one. And I think <laughs> at like, the end, you probably bought like between 17 and like 25 of these. And I'm like, who the heck is this lady? I'm just like, okay, okay, okay. And then so randomly I decided to like go onto her Facebook page and then I'm just scrolling and scrolling and I see like everything is about her kids and everything is about her kids and kids and kids. And then it was like one of the pictures you had on there it was like a picture in a Wendy's and like the Wendy's sign, yep. I love adoption. And I was like, oh, something with her. There's some correlation between adoption. And then your daughter worked there. And then I put it together. Oh, her daughter's adopted. And then I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> there we go. She gets it. And I was like, yeah. it's always something <laughs> that clicks. But I'm just like, who's this random lady that's just like, <laughs> buying all of these cupcakes i know i told my husband i said this lady's gonna think i'm nuts I was like, <laughs> it's so random i mean it was like every day can you make this one out to doctor such and such can you make this one out to doctor <laughs> Yeah. Okay. See, yeah, this is what I'm fun. telling people. Do your fundraisers. You never know who's watching you. You never know who's going to support you. I That's right. You all the time. That's right. All right. So, okay. So Jessica, we are going to get into this. So, um, so you adopted your beautiful daughter. Um, so did you always know that you wanted to adopt? Uh, yes, I did. I always did. Um, so I found out in my twenties that my dad was actually adopted by my grandpa. Okay. Um, and then my cousin was raised by my Nana through the foster system. Oh, so I always wanted to become a foster home because I knew there was a need out there for good foster homes, um, you know, for kids. So my husband and I, we had our son and then we um, dealt with some fertility issues. So after trying several things and having several surgeries, it just wasn't successful. So um, we decided we were going to start our adoption process earlier than we had, <laughs> we had planned. We thought maybe we'd have, you know, just a couple, you know, two or three. Um, and then we would, you know, start the, just a little later, start the adoption process. So, um, so we went to the classes and became foster parents and started the process. When you started the process, did you have any gender preferences? Did you have your heart set on a girl or a boy? I know you already had a son. Yeah, no, I, I, we didn't care. We didn't care. Um, we didn't have gender preference. We, we didn't have ethnic preference. We, we, we didn't care either way. We were, gotcha. we were good with whatever. <laughs> now, um, were you and your husband on the same page at the same time about adoption? And did you include your son in this decision? Like, did you ask him like, you know, mommy and daddy are thinking about, you know, having another baby? Like, did you have these conversations? Like, how was that? So we, Robert and I had the conversation before, before we got married, we had talked about adoption. Um, so we had always known that we were going to do that. Um, and then when we had the issues, it was just like, okay, well then let's, let's just go sign up for the classes. So him and I were always on the same page with it. Austin was little. So he was five 
we did talk to him about it and tell him, you know, ex explain kind of what fostering is. Um, he went to one of our classes with us so he could experience, um, you know, that. And they had a, a like a counselor there that kind of mm -hmm. helped to discuss just the process of it, what a foster home is, what, you know, to, to little kids. They specialized with yep. little kids. Um, so he, we did involve him in it. Yeah. We, yeah, we did. What were your fears entering um, this process? So it, it seems so silly now to look back on it, but I remember having a conversation with Robert in the car and I said, because my son, like, you know, when you, you have, you have babies. So, you know, like when that love, when you have one, one child, you think, oh my gosh, like, like we worried about the, the like the adopted child. And mm -hmm. I'm just being completely honest. Mm -hmm. We worried like, oh gosh, are they going to feel like you know, they're not as loved as our, mm -hmm. our biological, are they gonna, um, you know, are we not going to feel the same way mm -hmm. about, I mean, you know, just like the, are we not going to kind of feel these are the true same? fears? These are true yeah, fears. Yeah. 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 They were, yeah. It. Cause some yeah, people was, don't want to verbalize it, especially on like a public, you know, platform. So I'm so happy yeah. that you're saying this. Yeah. But I mean, you wonder, are we, is the feelings that we have for our son going to be different than the feelings than we have for, you know, our foster kids or our adopted, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I remember having that conversation. So yeah, there were some, um, concerns, you know, cause I didn't want to bring a child into my home to have them feel anything less than, you know, completely loved and cherished. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, we did, we did have those small concerns and uh, obviously I, we just laugh at it now because it was ridiculous, but so your adoption process, was it long? Was it short? How was that for you? Mm. So, um, they called me, Cheyenne was seven days old. Um, they called me and they said, we have this baby that's in the NICU. Um, she's failure to thrive, but, um, you know, because your husband has, I wasn't in the medical field at the time, but because Robert was, they, they said, you know, we have this baby if, if you want to try. So I said, okay. So I dropped everything. Robert stayed home with Austin. Um, I drove to Oklahoma city. She was in the NICU at Oklahoma city. Um, I stopped on the way at a baby gap and picked up all, the, all these clothes, everything I could. That was everything. Because, pink. <laughs> yeah. But, well, they called me and told me it was a little boy. Oh, so, oh everything blue. <laughs> yeah. So I bought everything blue and I, I, I pull, I get there and I walk up to the NICU and I'm like, I'm here for, um, the baby boy. The, and they're like, Oh, you must be Miss Harold. And so here I am with all these gap bags in my hand and, um, not having any medical experience at all, didn't realize that, you know, you, yeah, you can't bring that into the NICU. You mm -hmm. got to wash your hands. You got to scrub in and out. It's a whole situation. So they actually gave me a room right down from the NICU and put a sign on the door that said new mom. And so they took me and let me put all my stuff in there. Um, and then they took me back down to the NICU and we're walking over towards this bassinet and there's a pink blanket over it. And I said, I, I don't think that's the, the right baby. And they said, no, no, that, this, this is her. This is her. And I said, wow, they told me it was a male. And they're like, no, nope, we've, we've double checked. So they showed me the paperwork and the paperwork was all correct. So they just told me incorrect on the phone. Um, so it was a, it was a daughter. <laughs> Be ready for anything. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, luckily I did buy some green and yellow um, <laughs> outfit. So, you know, we did that, but she spent a lot of time in the NICU and I, um, uh, how long you know, was I, she there? uh, she was there about a month. Okay. Think, about a month. Um, but I stayed with her every day. Robert stayed home. I had help, um, with, cause we lived in Oklahoma at the time. So his sister, that's where he's from. So his sister was there and, um, I just had a whole, a whole tribe down there of help. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was able to stay with her at the hospital and kind of, you know, have that, that time with her, mm -hmm. um, just to bond and, and, um, you know, be mom and daughter. But it, w as soon as they pulled that blanket back, I, it was like, 
oh my gosh, it, I, it just, I just fell apart. Mm-hmm. I fell in love. My heart broke wide open. And that, that was, that was my baby. Like I just, it was, it was just an unreal feeling. And I always tell my kids, you know, God blessed me with my children. Some he, he, um, you know, gave to me through birth and others he gave to me. Like she, she just has always meant to be my kid. Mm -hmm. And it just took us a little bit to, um, find her, but yeah, that, that was a, that was a precious moment for me. And I called my mom and I called Robert and I'm crying and, Oh my God, she's so beautiful. And I just don't know why he can't. <laughs> and you know, their, her name, um, she had a different name at birth. I would prefer not to put that out online, but she did have a different name at birth. Um, so for the, fir- you know, for uh, the first, while we were in the hospital, you know, there, I was just kind of, I was using her name and calling her baby girl. And, um, and then when the, you know, the foster, um, counselor came in and spoke to me, she said there, you know, there's a, this, this baby's going, going to be up for adoption. Um, you know, she's, she's not, it's going to be a process and a long process, but the child will be, um, you know, up for adoption because the mother had several other kids, um, that she had lost to the system, um, or given to the system. Um, so, and they had all been adopted out. So they kind of knew from the beginning that it it would be an adoption, um, process more than a foster. So she was basically living with us in, in the foster home until she was able to be adopted by us, um, later on, two years later. So, um, when you got to the hospital and you saw her, her daughter Mm -hmm. is African-American. Um, did they tell you that the baby was African-American when they called you and told you, or was this Mm -hmm. another? Yeah, no, uh -uh, they didn't tell me anything. We were expecting a Caucasian boy and now (laughs) she's African-American. No, No, I don't, I don't remember, um, them telling me that, um, the ethnicity. I, I do know that. So we, we adopted through the tribe, the native American tribe. My Mm -hmm. husband is, um, native American. So we did it through the tribe. So I knew she had in like native American in her. Um, but other than that, I, yeah, no, they didn't tell me anything. And honestly, when, when I pulled the blanket back and I'm looking at her, they're telling me about her and, you know, it came up that she, that she was you know, she was mixed. She was native American and, um, African American. And I'm looking at her and I said, are you sure? <laughs> Cause she was so like light skinned and she had like just bone straight hair. I, I don't, it just, yeah, I didn't. Um, and then the other babies that were kind of in the NICU, um, man, there were some go- gorgeous, gorgeous kids. There was a, um, a little, next to us, right next to us, there was, um, an African-American family that had just had a little boy and he, his skin, he was so dark skinned and, um, you know, he just, he was so beautiful. Um, but she just, there was such a contrast. I said, I I think you're probably wrong. And, you know, they had just told me that she was a boy. So I was like, okay, well, they're probably wrong on just the whole aspect of it. They don't know any background on this kid. So, um, but, uh, she, the older she got, um, you know, the, she, as she changed, you, you could see, you know, you could then start to see the, um, mm-hmm. just everything coming to fluid. She was just gorgeous. She was just gorgeous. <laughs> she really is. And I mean, and that's honestly, um, the thing with African-American babies sometimes at birth, you know, that melon doesn't come in yet. And so it's just like, you know, what, what, what is their complexion going to be like, you know? And then as they start getting older, you're just like, okay, I see it. I see it. That, that Yeah. And I didn't know anything that. about that. Cause mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm like white. I, I don't like, I didn't, <laughs> white so, then, so I didn't know anything about any of that. So uh-huh. here I am. And let me just tell you her hair. Oh gosh, her hair. So when her hair started to grow in like thick and get longer and stuff, 
Mm-hmm. I was the mom at the store finding whatever African-American woman I could and just mm-hmm. standing there with my baby waiting for them to go, girl, let me help you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, and I didn't such, know what I was doing. Such, but it's such a thing. It's such a thing that, um, you know, even to this day, I mean, honestly, to this day, there are, um, there's so many families that adopt that you know, once they go through the process, and this is more so I'm talking about with private agencies, they go through the process and they're open to all races and ethnicities, but there's no real education that's given, you know? And it's like, I mean, you have people that slide into my DMs all the time and they'll send me pictures of their baby's head. And they're like, is her hair going to change? Yes. It's yeah. going to change. It's oh, going yeah, it goes, change. it changes a couple of times. It's going <laughs> to change. You know yep. what I mean? Is her yep. skin complexion going to change? Yeah, it's going to change. But these yep. are things that I feel like wholeheartedly this should be discussed with your professional. You know what I mean? But yeah, just, absolutely. Just, I just embrace it. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, and I told the um, adoption agent well the the foster system they have an adoption process you know people they have an adoption agency through the the foster program so if that comes up and there's any questions you and one of my suggestions was you honestly you need to give classes there has to be and but i mean honestly because some of the agencies give classes but they're not they're not classes i mean that i feel like prepare you for real life situations because again not at all. My black is not Cheyenne's black and not my That's daughter's right. black and not someone else. They yeah. come on all different spectrums, all different facets. And it's just like, it's not one fits all, you know? That's I mean? correct. It's yeah. Like, you have to prepare, even give references. So like, if you know, and I mean, this is like shooting it out there, but if you know that, say, for example, you live in Oklahoma city, give me references to a stylist I can go to in Oklahoma city. That can help right. with her hair when she turns yep. two years old and three years old. Don't just leave me out here standing in Walmart hoping that the next black lady that comes in the aisle will say, Jessica, let me help you with her hair. Yeah. To me, it's throwing you to the wolves and it's not helping Cheyenne. You yeah, know, because was, I feel like every was, little girl knows when she looks pretty, you know? Yep. Yep. And, like, and I did not want her to be, so that's all I did. I walked around. I, I mean, I went to salons. I went, um, you know, friends. I would add, I just, anybody I could um, to get lessons because, you know, when, if you don't know that, if you don't know what you're doing, you can do a lot of damage for starters to their that hair. Makes me so happy that you said that because so many moms, they just kind of give up because it's overwhelming. It's hard. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is. But you, you but it's if you don't know, you don't know. You know what I mean? But you have to be willing to learn. Yeah, for yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would. That's I spent a lot of time going um, because man, she had such beautiful hair, and I didn't want to wreck it. And everybody would just say to me, you know, like all my white family and everything, well, just put relaxers in it. Mm -mm. And I was like, um, no, because I heard that that can damage. Like you don't want to damage their hair. So. yeah, that is my number one thing. And if anybody um, does adopt interracially, ask questions, reach out and talk to your adoption agency and say, listen, I need help with this. And it's going to be something that I'm going to need with help with until the kid's a teenager because it changes. Ongoing help. Ongoing yes. help. Ongoing yep. help. Ongoing yep. Help. yep. So um, what was that conversation like with your family um once they found out like how did you tell them that oh she's black or she's mixed with indian and african-american like what did you say oh we adopted a baby girl and like was it just oh my god did anyone say to you i guess let me just because did anyone say why didn't you get a white baby oh gosh yes Okay. And we would, and, um, even throughout the year, even up until now, we, we have derogatory statements, um, said to us, my family was, they, they didn't care. I didn't have that conversation with them. I still don't have that conversation with people. Um, she's my daughter and I, and I, that's how I introduce her. Um, I don't explain anything. I don't feel like I need to. And, um, I learned that over the years when she was a baby and I would see the stairs and, um, when people would say things, I would react to that. How, Um, how did you react? 
oh, I would be livid. I mean, I would be livid. I would, I, there, there was a time she was probably two years old. Um, and we were at the mall and it was m- me, Robert, Austin, our biological um, old, oldest and Cheyenne. And we were, ri- she was riding the, um, we were eating pizza and riding. They had um, a Ferris wheel in the middle of the mall. So we were eating pizza and they were riding the Ferris wheel and, and she had to go to the bathroom. So um, Robert sat with Austin at the little table they had there. And I took Cheyenne into the bathroom and there was an old lady in there. She was probably 75 to 80 years old. And I walked in with her and I, I do have um, some tattoos that, you know, I, I can cover up, but when I'm wearing a dress or out in public, I, you know, I show them. So, um, so here I am with Cheyenne and we're walking into the bathroom and the lady looked at me and she goes, like she sighed, she goes, do you pride yourself in being a freak with your tattoos and your little Negro baby? And she said this in front of my daughter in the bathroom. So I let Cheyenne go to the bathroom and I walked her out and I took her to Robert and I said, um, I I need you to watch her for a minute. And I walked back into the bathroom. Yes, you did. And that lady was standing there and I said, and I'm going to get emotional. I'm sorry. It's okay. (sighs) I'm sorry. It's okay. I looked at that woman and I said, you can say whatever you want to me. But don't you dare ever talk to my kid like that again. Don't you dare. I was just so mortified. Um, That was just because she was at that age. There had been things before that, but she was never old enough to understand what was happening. And in that moment, I could see in her face that time she knew what was happening and it broke my heart for her. So I'm sorry. (laughs) I don't mean to get emotional. It just, so there's things like that, that you have to deal with. Um, that can be frustrating, <laughs> but, um, Oh, sorry. But my family has always been just, um, I don't know, they, <laughs> we, I never talked about it. We never talked about it. We still haven't talked about it. She just is Cheyenne and a part of our family and, and they love and support her. Yep. But that's one thing that um, to me is truly important because you have people like the old woman in the bathroom that consider her to be a Negro. And you have your family that look at Cheyenne and they just see your daughter because yep. you have some families that they're open to all children of all races and ethnicities, but their families have the views of seeing children outside of whatever race you are as not the right fit for your family. And they will view that child as something else. Yep. You know what I mean? And when families do reach out to me, and a lot of times it's through this channel, I tell them, if your family is not going to be open and supportive to that child and love them as though they are just your family. Then they then don't they don't do need it. to be there. They don't need to be you there. You don't need to do it. You don't need to do it because that child will suffer. Mm-hmm. That child is going to be the one that suffers because I'm sure when you guys go home for Christmas, Thanksgiving, when they come here, any family gathering, Cheyenne just feels like Cheyenne. She's yeah. not going there feeling as though, oh my gosh, I'm going to be the oddball out. I'm going to be the, no, she just feels like, oh, I'm just going to be around Nana, pop, pop, and auntie, yep. somebody. that's just yep. it because these are just family. You have some children that there's literally a fear in them because they know that it's almost going to be like a segregated, a segregated uh, community yep. that they're just yep. walking into. And it's just like, they should not feel that way. It should just be love because I'm going with my parents, but it's not important it's not big enough for you to only feel that safety at home where you live because you're going to be around more people and so if more people that had a transracial household had families like yours that were just so welcoming inviting and loving it would work better you know what I mean even sometimes when you have families and it's just like well I live in rural rural Nebraska. And it's like, we, you know, I may have seen two Africans, two African-Americans in my entire life. 
you can't, that, that's not fair. You yeah, know? no, it's, it's not, it's, it's, um, it's, it's not fair. Yeah. It's, no. it's because when you bring that baby home, it's like, everyone is going to be looking at them like they're a unicorn. It's like, yep. Wow. Yep. Wow. And it's, and it's nuts because we like, we'll just, I don't know. We'll just be walking through the store and Cheyenne just doesn't even notice it anymore. And neither do I just because it's happened so much over the years. Um, my, my husband still has a little less of a tolerance for it, but, but Cheyenne, Cheyenne and I, it's just like, we just don't even notice it anymore. And Robert will come up and be like, yeah, that person was looking at us. And I was like, yeah, well, they probably think Cheyenne's beautiful. So, like, yes. you know yeah. what I mean? Like, we, we just don't, yeah, we just don't even notice it anymore. And we, we don't acknowledge it. We don't engage it. Um, she is ours. And, you know, her, her brothers are, oh gosh, here lately, they're just so protective. It's ridiculous. She's got four dads is what, what I always say. Cause she's, <laughs> it's just oh gosh that poor girl she she can't we she was in gymnastics one year um austin is now 22 but at the time he was probably 17 or so 16 or 17 and she was in gymnastics and you know how they wear their gymnastics outfit mm -hmm. and then put like a sweatshirt over it with their shoes to go to gymnastics so um she's leaving the house i'm taking her gymnastics and austin's like um you're gonna let her leave the house in that <laughs> <I'm just> like, <laughs> Yeah, we're going to gymnastics. Well, can't she at least put sweatpants on? I said, she's got her gymnastics outfit on. Mom, she shouldn't be leaving the house in that. I mean, he's so protective. He's the one yes, at the beach. Be. He's the, yeah, he's the one at the beach with the towel, walking around with the towel. <laughs> <trying to cover laughs> <her up. laughs> I love it. I love an yeah. old protective brother. I have one, so I, um, I get it. I get it. <laughs> You know that struggle, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. All too well. My life was miserable. All too well. So was adoption a normal conversation in your household or was it just not really spoken about? Like she knew she was adopted, but we never really spoke about it. Or was it just a normal conversation? Um, it was just a normal conversation. I always just wanted her to feel comfortable coming to us. I kept books. I have, she, I always, she has um, four, four baby books while the other kids just have one, but it's because I have in her books, I have all her biological parents information and, um, stories about her family. And, um, so I kind of kept everything. I don't think everybody does that, but I wanted to do that for her just in case, cause she's mm -hmm. going to have questions. She's going to, at some mm -hmm. point I'm sure want to know, um, you know, she's got a lot of siblings and stuff. So I wanted her to always feel comfortable to come and talk to me about that and, and anything really. So, yeah, it was just an open conversation. Um, do you know these are conversations that she has with her friends? She does. And she'll, <laughs> um, she's in color guard, too. She This is just a, a cute story. So she's in color guard. Um, and the very first football game she had called me and she's like, mom, I need some money for food. And I said, okay, well, where are you? She said, I'm sitting with the band up in the bleachers. So I said, okay, I'll walk over there. So I walk over and I get in front of the band and I'm walking up the stairs and, um, I, I couldn't find her in the crowd because there's so many band members and she yells out mom. And I looked up and I went, Oh, there you are. And everybody's head turned and looked at me <laughs> and in unison, they kind of, you could, you could see the look kind of thing. Mom? So I, <laughs> <laughs> they were all like trying to figure it out in their head. You can watch them trying to process it in their head. So um, I walked up and gave her the money. And then when we were in the truck on the way home from the game, she said, um, she goes, oh boy. She goes, everybody said, oh goodness. Um, so she goes that you could tell they were trying to ask, but without asking. Without asking. Mm -hmm. So she finally said, um, yeah, I'm adopted. And everybody went, oh, and she goes, why? Oh. Uh -huh. and, and everybody said oh because you're adopted do you know and she's like um yeah no it's it's not that she said that's mm -hmm. not us that's not an old thing mm -hmm. she said I, that's Mr. they're my family and that's all I know I don't mm -hmm. you know so then um they were all asking her if she's ever met her biological mom and she said no I don't I don't want to right now and um so they just, they do have those conversations. Yeah. Her and her friends do have those conversations. <laughs> so would you say that it, um, it's been 
challenging or difficult to raise a child of a different race? Um, or it's, it's had its moments? It's had its moments just because I, I want her to know her heritage. You know what I mean? So we would do, um, we would go to African-American museums and we would go to just any, anything Native American museum. I want her to know every part of her, you know, like you want them to know their heritage. And when you're not a part of that heritage, you can sometimes feel like, okay, I have, first of all, I have no right to be here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I have no right to be here. Here I am this very white <laughs> Mm -hmm. woman I, I don't know I don't know how to explain it candy but um you just sometimes you feel like you're you're being inappropriate when you're just trying to give your daughter what she needs okay you know when I feel the things it's okay to feel the things I mean I think with you just being honest about how you feel and just saying you know I feel a little bit uncomfortable in this setting um but my main goal is to make sure that you are a part of who you are and who you are is who I am because you're my daughter. Right. I think she'll get it. But for you to feel uncomfortable, I get it because of the history that comes with it. You know what yeah. I mean? But that's not who you and are. And this is just, a, just a, for instance, we go, we went to um, a museum that they had in there about like slavery and, and here, Candy, here I am. Like, you know me, I'm the, I mean, here I'm here. I am in this museum with her. And I just felt like, gosh, I have, this is awful. I have no, <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't, um, but I needed to do that for her. And I, and I, I hoped I was doing it correctly and being as respectful as I could in that situation. Um, you know, just, just for everybody involved, but um, there are some challenges, but you, you just do it for your kids, you know? Yeah. yeah. You do it for your kids. Yeah. Um, so I'm happy that you do that. Um, just trying to make sure that she gets a part of her race and her culture, you know, intertwined with, you know, the life and culture that you have, because I mean, honestly, you're trying to make sure that she gets the best of all worlds. You know, yep. she has a part of your life and heritage. She gets a part of her Native American life and heritage and a part of her African-American life and heritage. And all you have to do is you have to just do your best to instill all three of those in her. Because, I mean, honestly, all three of those are a part of her makeup, no matter yep. how you look at it. Because yep. you're who raised her. But biologically genetically those other two things are a part of her makeup so you just have to try your hardest to make sure that she knows all three of those because that's who she is no matter how you 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 look at it that's just who she is you know yeah. she's gonna make her a well-rounded woman in the future you right. know that's just what it is I always had Robert to help me with the Native American side of it because he's mm -hmm. Native American so he was always able to teach her about all of that side of it. Um, but when you don't have anybody to kind of walk you through, That's but it's funny because listen, God, God sends people. I, tr I believe, I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. And he has sent me some pretty amazing, strong black women in my life. Mm -hmm. y you being one of them, girl. <laughs> but, um, he has sent me some, some pretty amazing women. Um, through this journey to help me. And, um, you know, I, I just, it's, it's been amazing. Yeah. It's been amazing. Yeah. Then it, and, and I mean, as she, you know, as she gets older and steps out there on her own, she will, she'll come into her own and she'll, she'll see what she gravitates towards. You know what I mean? She'll see what she gravitates towards. But again, whenever you, um, whenever you adopt, even if, you know, you are, um, even if you are Caucasian and let's say you adopt a child from Poland. Yeah. I would hope that you would somehow teach your child about Polish culture and Polish food and try to, you yeah. yourself try to learn the Polish language. You yep. know what I mean? Like yep. these are things that this is what I'm saying. It has nothing to necessarily do with race. It's about making sure your child knows who yeah. they are yeah. as a person. 
That's you right. know what I mean? And people so many times they try to put everything on race and it's not about that. It's about yeah. making sure that your child knows who they are and who they yeah. were before you became a part of their lives. Even if you adopted this child right out the hospital, yeah. they were somebody before you became a part of their lives. They have a life before you and that part yeah. of their life stems from their parents and their grandparents and all of those things. So I, 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 I think that ex- what you're doing is, is, is completely, I think what you're doing is right. Yeah. So, um, um, so I can tell you, we, we did when we adopted her. So from the, from, I got her, at, um, I met her at the hospital at seven days old. I brought her home and then Two years later, we were able to adopt her. There was a rough road in between there. Um, we had to do paternity tests mm-hmm. and, um, you know, there's a whole process that has to happen. Um, but we were able to adopt her at two years old and um, we we did rename her because when they told us that this was going to be an adoption situation, the worker actually told me, um, you know, you can go ahead and start calling her by whatever name you're going to give her. This was probably six months in. Um, and so we did, we renamed her, um, and on her birth certificate. So she doesn't know any, she was never called her, her name at birth. Really. It was always baby girl or, um, you know, Cheyenne or whatever, but, um, so we did rename her. And um, I, her, we spell her, her first name is Cheyenne, um, but we spell it A-N-N-E, so C-H-E-Y-A-N-N-E, because my middle name is Anne with an E. So she has a, a piece of me in her name. So, um, yeah. yeah, so we wanted to give her just a little piece of that. So Beautiful. Yeah. So um, we know that parenting is difficult and... Um, is it difficult? Jesus. Um, but can you remember any moment that was, you can say was specifically difficult that was, that had any kind of, um, conjunction with her being adopted? Um, like her teased or bullied or anything like that. So she was never really bullied for the adoption part of it. We didn't talk about that. Uh, When she was in elementary school, I do remember there was a situation, but she was always in school with her older brother. So he was kind of always there with her Mm -hmm. in the school because they're, you know, um, he, he was there. There was one time when I guess he had kind of moved up to the middle school and she was still in elementary school and there was, there was an issue. Cause I remember going into the counselor and having a conversation about it. It was so long ago. I'm, I apologize. She's, she's almost 18 now. So this was a long time ago, but I remember going into the school and doing like having a, like an open discussion with the kids. Like I made it fun. Um, and we talked about adoption and what it means. And, you know, I, I made up little fun games and just to kind of explain to them, um, you know, uh, little kids, what adoption meant. I don't know if there was an issue and I did that, or I think it was probably more, more along the lines of, I came to, um, a school function and the kids had questions because, it mostly revolved around me being white and her being, you know, African-American. So that was most of the conversations, not, not really around adoption. Did her teachers ever um, have anything to say about that? Like about her looking different from her parents or making uh, any snide remarks or anything like that? Uh, no, not our teachers. No, not our teachers. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, no, most of all our teachers were great. Perfect. Uh, yeah, it's usually it's usually out in public and it's just, you know, the you know, it's usually the older generation. Um but yeah, no, her teachers have all been real supportive and great and so so we um hear about 
adoption trauma a lot. And um, obviously that would be your daughter's story and not for you to speak on that. But um, was there ever these dogs, boy, I tell you, they're always barking at something that's nothing outside. I don't know. I don't so know. I, yeah, my friend is here. I, I, can, I can tell you, um, so my mom and her, they went in, and I think this is what you're asking. So my mom and her, it was her birthday. Her birthday is beginning of December. So um, my mom would always fly down. We would decorate the Christmas tree, and then her and her, um, my daughter and her would go pick out her birthday cake, right? So they went to pick out a birthday cake, and Cheyenne wanted this big old princess cake. She was probably five or six years old and she wanted this ginormous princess cake. So my mom ordered the cake, attempted to order the cake. And she said, I need it, you know, two days from now. And this is what I want written on it. And the lady behind the counter said, we can't do that. We can do a cupcake, but we can't do that. So they both come home, Cheyenne and my mom both come home and they both walk in the door and they're both in tears. And I said, what is happening? And she's like, my mom is crying so hard. Like she could, she couldn't talk. They wouldn't let us order the cake. They said she had to have a cupcake because they didn't have enough time and blah, blah, blah. And I, because my mom, you know, we, she lived out of state, so she would only come visit us. So she had, she didn't, experience a lot of that as much mm -hmm. as we did, you know? So I knew exactly what was going on when they came home and told me the story. So I said, okay, well you stay here with Cheyenne and I'm, I'm going to go up to the store. Right. So I go up there. Um, I go to the same counter. I order the same cake for the same day, for the same time, everything the same. And the lady goes, okay, no problem. We'll have that ready for you. And I said, okay, so now you go over there because I could see the little cupcake <laughs> on the thing. I could see the little order form for the cupcake. I said, now you go over there and you grab that little form right there and you bring it over here. And then I want that lady that took that order out here right now along with the manager. And she said, ma'am, what's wrong? I said, my mother came in to order that cake for my daughter and was told, I, gave, I just gave you the same information that she gave you and was told that she couldn't have that cake ready because there wasn't enough time. I said, when I know what's going on, that lady saw a, a black child with a white woman and didn't like it. So she was going to punish that little girl for it. So I said, now you go get that woman and go get the manager because we need to have a little conversation. So the manager came out um, and the lady did mm -hmm. end up saying some very derogatory things and ended up being fired right there. But, um, that's, that's some of the instances that, um, you know, unfortunately it can happen when people are just ignorant and, you Does know, I ever tell you how these things make her feel. Um, yeah, we, we talk a lot about it. And she, she, it's fine. She's like, mom, I knew, you, mom, I knew you were going to go do something. Mom, I knew you were going to do something. And now she can see it in my face and she'll, she'll like come over to me and she'll go, mom, mom, it's not, it's okay, mom, mom, it's okay. Don't, don't say anything. Just let's just walk away. Um, it doesn't happen as much now. It just, it did a lot when she was littler. I, it, I, I think it all depends on where you live though unfortunately like that happened while we were in Alabama uh, you know, it, yeah and Alabama is still kind of um mm -hmm. yeah behind the times a little bit so it all depends on where you live I haven't had it happen at all since we've lived here and we've been here nine years it's just all in where you lived and we've lived a lot of places because Robert worked for the government so you know we moved around a lot so I, I think that has a lot to do with it too. How did this open up your, um, how did this open up your eyes and your views to how people see African-Americans? Oh, it's, it's disgusting. Like it's, it's, it's broke my heart. Yeah. It's broke my heart. It, it's broke my heart. Um, nobody. I had to have a discussion about my, my daughter about, 
things no mother should ever have to have a, a discussion with their kid about. If you get pulled over by the police, you know, stop. Talk to them. Put your hands up. Don't move. Call me as soon as you can. Like, conversations that just should not have to be ha had with. Different so. conversation that you, than you have with your boys. I, uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't have to have that conversation with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have to have that conversation. Yeah. And the, um, yeah, there's things when she leaves the house, there's things that I worry about that I, that I don't have to worry about with my, um, my white sons. It's, it's just, um, it's very sad. It's very, yeah. very sad. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to families considering transracial adoption? What honest advice would you give to them? Um, well, well, first of all, if, if you don't have a supportive family and, and you're not going to have a, a village of people supporting and not seeing color, don't do it. Don't do it for you. Don't do it for that kid. Don't do it because we, we don't we don't want to take in kids that may have already had somewhat of a rough upbringing and destroy them any further. You, you just, it's, it's, you just don't, you can't do that. So if you don't have a supportive family, um, you know, that it's just, it's just not something that you, sh that you should do. And, um, you know, it's important that you educate even your own kids, like my own kids. My grandmother is Polish. I make pierogies. My kids, we talk about, that's all we do. That's, that's what families do. They pass on their traditions and their background to their kids. If you have an interracial child, you also have to s figure that out for them so you can pass it along. Celebrate you know, Kwanzaa, celebrate, you, you do things, celebrate adoption days, celebrate black history Month. celebrate anything, whatever ethnic they are, find celebrations, do the research and, and make that a tradition in your family for them so that they can pass that on to their kids. And they, they are confident. My daughter is confident in who she is. She knows exactly who she is. And, sh and she'll tell you, um, I, I have no questions. And if I do, I'll, I'll get them because my, my family will get them for me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you have to be willing to, to do that, to pass on to your kids, you know. And you have to be, you have to be willing to ask questions and, um, there's a lot of times you have to swallow your pride <laughs> and, um, you know, go ask questions and they're uncomfortable questions, but, you know, they're for your kid and we would all die for our kids. So mm -hmm. a little uncomfortable for me, as long as it's, it's going to be, um, educational for her or, make her stronger in the long run, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be uncomfortable <laughs> for her. <laughs> I'll be uncomfortable for her. Let me ask you this. Was it, or is it, cause I'm sure you still get them, but not as much as she is. It was when she was little, was it the stairs that bothered you or was it the, when people said something that bothered you? Um, in the beginning it was everything. Cause I thought, how dare you look at, me like that like this sweet little baby um and then I got to where the stairs didn't bother me as much and even if they verbalized it and she didn't hear it I was okay with that it was when they verbalized it and she heard it and I know that it might have affected her I, I, I can't allow it like, I still can't allow it. And she'll be the one talking me down. Um, 
she'll be the one talking me down in those situations. Okay. And that will be, um, it's okay. Mom, it's all right. And I, it, no, no, it's not all right. It's not okay. But I have to kind of check myself because if it's going to embarrass her, yeah. I don't want to make a bad situation worse by, you know, by embarrassing her. So I, I, um, most of the time I won't say anything in front of her. I'll kind of wait until she's walked away and I'm where she doesn't see me. And then I'll go and say something to that person. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's mostly the verbalizing. Gotcha. Um, what does adoption mean to you? Oh God, everything. It gave me my daughter. Mm -hmm. It means everything. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have my daughter without it. So, um, I mean, it's, it's sent from God. <laughs> it's sent from God. And I always tell her, um, I always tell, sorry, Candy, give me just a minute. Okay. Shut that door. Okay. Will you please shut the door? I'm on a podcast. I have, sorry guys. I have four kids and one of them <laughs> <laughs> open the door and is standing there. <laughs> um, I, what was I saying? I always tell her what do I, what was I saying? Adoption. Why it's important to you adoption and why it's important to me um yeah i mean it's a gift gift from god and i always i i always tell her oh i always tell her her mom loves her i know her mom loved her because she went to a hospital to have her mm -hmm. so she just was sick you know and wasn't able to take care of her so um you know that that was my job until they get to meet Mm -hmm. and you were obsessed with her do what i said and you were obsessed with her oh god i mean yeah. we know that you love your boys but i tell you and when i looked at your page i i didn't even know you had more kids <laughs> I was like, she has sons. Yeah. She's like, she's, seriously i'm addicted <laughs> I'm like, she has sons. She is literally yes. that 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 boy mom that was blessed with that one daughter. And she's just like she's my life. Yes, <laughs> I can't deal yes. with any more testosterone <laughs> at all. No, nope. yep. We have we have um mommy daughter days where we'll go out. She loves seafood, so we'll go eat seafood together. And mm -hmm. um, you know, she'll get like a a little virgin daiquiri or whatever, and we talk about what's going on and. Um, you know, her grades and what she's doing. And we have so much fun together. So much fun. It's so much fun. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. I'm so happy that you agreed to do this because again, um, you know, all of you guys that watch my videos, you know, that um, I, I speak with people all the time and people reach out to me all the time, but it's very rare that I ask someone to be a part of my channel. And it's because I feel like they have something that I feel will help my viewers. And, um, I also know who's going to be, uh, transparent and honest. And this was probably by far one of the most honest and transparent interviews I feel like I've ever done. And I knew that you were going to bring it and I knew you were going to hold nothing back. <laughs> and I'm happy that you did that. Um, because, you know, I can't relate to this subject whatsoever. Um, but I do know that I hear, you know, in groups and things like that, all of the concerns that you just voiced. And um, a part of why I started my channel and why I do the interviews that I do is I want a lot of times when we're going through things, especially as parents, is everyone always feel like they're alone or they're it's only me. It's only happening to me. And it's like, but it's not, you know what I mean? Oh. What you went through with your daughter, you have at least 50 people that are going to go through that today alone. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? You are not being, you are not in an isolated situation. This is happening. And Jessica is here to tell you that it gets better or you just literally just learn how to deal with it because- yep. After a while, it just doesn't even matter anymore. You know what I mean? Your child gets older and more so they will learn how to deal with it at their own 
pace and at their own speed and you don't want to embarrass them. Um, but as she yeah, said, uh, when you, uh-huh, go ahead. Diane now, um, well, she has me as a mother, so <laughs> as you can imagine, um, she'll just say things to people like, you know, quit being stupid or you're being ignorant right now, or, you know, quit being bigoted or she'll just, she's very, um, she stands up for herself Mm -hmm. and she's growing into that. And I'm so proud of her for that because it could have gone the other way. She could have let those people, um, put a negative connotation on her. And she's refusing that. Yes, It's Mm -hmm. not me that's negative. It's you being negative. Mm -hmm. And I'm not here for it. So Mm -hmm. knock it off and just move on. And and it's so fun to watch. The first time she ever did that, girl, I think I cried. I Mm -hmm. probably cried for 20 minutes. I was so proud of her. (laughs) But another thing to even say what, you know, to kind of piggyback off of what you just said, and then I'm going to wrap this up. Mm -hmm. But what we spoke about earlier with, you know, getting to understand like her hair and her skin. And to me, that starts from when they're very young and building that self-confidence. So when they get to a certain age, they do feel comfortable with saying, Oh, you're being ignorant or you're being a bigot. That's her being confident within herself because that's that little girl that's being told, Oh my God, you're so beautiful. You're so smart. You're so confident. And she looks at herself and she feels that like, Oh my gosh, look at me today. You know, I can take on the world, not only when you feel that as a woman, as a little girl, but I know that I have the backing of my parents behind me. Uh I feel like I can take on the world. I need candy. I've always been like that. And I will tell anybody, and I've had friends for years ask me, where did I get my confidence from? That was my parents. Yep. That was nobody. That was nothing else besides my parents. <laughs> nothing else besides my parents. They made me feel like if I wanted to be that black woman that was up in space right now, that could have been me. That yep. wasn't my calling. I, I don't For like sure. stars and skies that much. But <laughs> you know what right? I mean. But that just goes to say, I'm telling you, once you start them from a very young age and build that self confidence and that self worth. They grow up and they feel it. But once they know they have the backing of their parents and when you decide that you want to adopt, whether that means that you are adopting a child of the same race, same culture, whatever it is, but especially if they do not look like you, you have to pour that love and that confidence and that self-worth in them because you're not always going to be around. There are going to be times that they're going to have to defend themselves without you there, defend themselves with their words and their knowledge. You understand what I mean? And she learned that by watching her mom and her dad. You know what I mean? You guys were pouring that into her, even when she didn't need it. You know what I mean? It wasn't a situation that she was being confronted with anything. You guys are just doing that in your free time. Let's go to this museum. Let's learn about this. Let's watch this film. Let's watch this documentary. Hey, let's read this book. All of that, that was just giving her the knowledge that she would need to be able to come back some of the conversations that she was going to need to have in the world when you guys weren't there, that's just building confidence and certain people, they just don't realize that. But if all I know is mommy and daddy's culture, I don't know who I am and I don't feel comfortable in that. So it's like, once you feel comfortable in who you are, I feel like you can tackle the world. Yep. And you guys did such a great job. You guys did such a great job. I mean, so besides her being aesthetically beautiful, because God knows she is, um, (laughs) Besides her being aesthetically, yes, ma'am. Yes, she is. <laughs> besides her being aesthetically beautiful, <laughs> she's just a strong, confident woman in who she is. And that's honestly, that's because of the great job that you and your husband did. I mean, really, you guys oh. just you guys just did a great job. And um, you're welcome. And I hope, I hope, I hope my viewers watching this um can look at this and really say, wow, you know, this can work. It does work. It's hard work, but it can work, you know? Oh, it can work so, so well. Yeah. And it's a beautiful, beautiful experience. So, yeah. Well, Jessica. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you doing this. 
Everybody that is watching, thank you so much for hanging in there and watching this video. This was so important for me to do. I wanted to do something on transracial adoption for quite some time now. But honestly, when I say I feel like I had to pick the right person to do it because I didn't yeah. want this like, um, I, I mean, sorry to say, but I didn't want like a cookie cutter. Yeah. Yeah. And perfect family right. to me that's not real life i want the tattoo on the chest so you know that's that you right. <laughs> and i see her trying to cover it up no i don't want the I, that's cause to me i'm not the airbrush perfect person so i want the 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 real life person that's who i speak to in my real life and i wanted you guys to see a real life family and that's who to me jessica is this, this is a real life mom this, with real life experiences and real life problems and real life, you know, situations that she's had to overcome. So thank you so much for watching. Um, as always, if you have any questions or concerns, um, if you have any feedback, leave them in the comments below. Please press that like button. If this is your first time here, welcome and thank you again. Please press that subscribe button, turn on your notifications so you know when I upload new videos. I upload a new video every other Thursday on a different adoption topic. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Jessica, thank you. And we will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.